America. Commies. Could the Cold War have been any more phallic? Hmm. These missile kits go together very easily, but uh, detailing them and painting them can take a while. So, welcome back to the Tarvis guys. Uh, it feels so good to be able to say that. Got the same problem here I have with the old Tarvis in one regard, and that is to do these recordings, I gotta turn off the air conditioning in it. Although it's very well insulated and has it's under a shed, it still doesn't take long for it to warm up in the Florida heat. But hey, if <laughs> these are the problems you've got. Uh, so we got quite a few little subjects to talk about today. And today was both a learning and a relearning experience. First thing is something really bad happened. Uh, I've been cutting the sprue for that uh, monogram Dornier 335 that I'm kit bashing, and I got a lot of work done on the kit bash today. Unfortunately, those very expensive God's Hands uh, snippers, uh, sprue cutters, you, of course, they're, you know, they have razor thin, very sharp, you can cut right to the edge, but it's made for removing the plastic from, you know, trimming the gate off, and that's it. And I have some heavier ones, some cheaper ones that I was using to, to cut the big pieces of sprue. Well, apparently at some point I must have used the God's hand, picked them up by mistake or something and tried to use them on a heavy piece of sprue, and the tip actually broke off one. So that's a $50 pair of, uh, snips that I'm going to have to replace because once you've started using those you get kind of hooked on them it's like chocolate you know or you know once you've tasted it there's no going back so that was a, an expensive little lesson and <laughs> they're really excellent they stay sharp but they are very thin bladed and made for cutting you know small pieces of plastic not for whacking big pieces of sprue speaking of styrene the Dornier, I believe this one was probably, uh, the shot was probably done in the 70s, so it's probably a 50 year old kit. It's the one that Tom Daniel sent me, and I told TD I was gonna kit bash it. Well, and the kit bash is going great. I've got some wicked ideas that are starting to take shape, uh, making a hybrid, uh, you know what, saving it for the reveal. Some of you probably already figured it out, I may have already said, but I found that this plastic is very thick gauge, and it's pretty brittle. Now, it may be because it's half a century old, um, or it could just be the uh, quality of the styrene they were using back then. But I found I had a very serious problem with crack propagation every time I cut something. I had to remove that back engine that they have uh, because I'm putting something else in there. And I, I, at one point, I just cut with a, 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 a good sized pair of uh, little uh, plastic snips, but I made probably a quarter, half inch cut and it split the fuselage almost in half, only a small piece of the bottom held, so I had to glue that back together. I couldn't get the, the saws in there, I couldn't get the angle, so I wound up etching it out with an X-Acto knife. And as you can gather, that took a little while, but uh, eventually uh, I did get the uh, rear engine removed and now I have room to, to make a, a new interior for what I'm going to put in there. So that was uh, a, a learning experience. I actually got to use the uh, Sparmax compressor and the new spray, well two of the spray guns. I haven't used that new one that sent to me yet. I'm saving it for something special. And the uh, the paints that I have are, are largely already thinned for the airbrush. And most of them seem to be working okay, despite the time they spend in storage. I did uh, start using some of the Tamiya lacquers and pre-painting some components, and it's coming along. I also uh, got started on, uh, actually it's been sitting on my desk forever, built, but I was, I was starting to detail out with a fantasy paint scheme on the uh, Thunderbird 2. I, I filed down the 2 because I'm going to use probably U.S. Air Force markings. I think I'm going to put it in a Southeast Asia campaign a la Vietnam and maybe have a little tank coming out of it or something. We'll see. But uh, the... It, it, it was a, it's a very simple, basic, easy kit to build, but but get it, but it does have some pretty big seams and everything. But I'm more interested in just having fun with it, and uh, that that's good, probably should look pretty cool when I'm done. And I, I I might throw that in the kit bash. I mean, it's really just a fantasy repaint, but 
Well, you know what? I think I'll add a few bits and bobs to it. Maybe some chin turrets and stuff with mini guns or something. We'll see. But uh, so I might have that going for the kit bash also. At the moment, the kit bash is still due at the end of April. Uh, if I remember, I'm going to put the, have several people have asked me about the build videos uh, schedule. So if I remember, I'll, I'll put it on here. I mean to include that on all my videos, but I often forget. So. But today was just a wonderful day of just here in the Tarbis building. My wife was in here doing some stuff with her uh, Princess Leia costume. So we were in here working together for a little while. And it's just really, it's working out nice so far. Got the, one of the well, you probably couldn't tell because the way it's hanging on the wall, but one of the uh, dive brakes was missing off the SBD, the Guilo's SBD that I have hanging on the wall. Well, I found it and got it glued back on. So that kit's complete now. And... The, uh, it, it, the other things I got done today, Ian had basically given me this little Airfix 172nd scale uh, BA Hawk and in the Red Arrows markings because someone had started it and they brought it back and didn't finish it and they lost the canopy. So I figured I'll do something with it, maybe make a, uh, have a little diorama in mind. But the, uh, although I got to give them credit, they got some really nice decals because I decaled the cockpit, but and surprising amount of detail for 172nd scale jet in the cockpit. Uh, well, newer kits are, you know, they're getting really detailed, even the smaller scales. But there were some serious fit issues, and I think I know why this guy gave up on it. Uh, that there is a hood that goes over the instructor's or back seater's uh, um, instrument. Uh, it covers the, his, the, the back of his instrument panel, and I could not get that thing to sit. And everything was in the right place. I mean, this this isn't that hard to do. I wound up having to clip off most of his instrument panel to get the thing to, to seat, and. But it was the, the, the whole cockpit section was bent when I got it, and I thought maybe from him trying to force it to fit or something. I don't know. Uh, if anybody's built that kit, let me know. I'd, I'd like to know if you had any problems with it. Uh, so, because you know, normally the new Airfix kits, they, they they should go together pretty well, modern tech and everything. And uh, not really sure what happened there. I thought maybe I had the wrong instrument panel alongside. They they look the same, but uh, maybe I, maybe I had but the maybe I had the front seaters panel in the back seat, but. I, I don't think that was it. I had to remove a lot of plastic. And uh, of course, those excellent decals then came off of my finger and went to the land of lost socks. You're, it's not a big deal. It's just a, a quick and dirty little fun build. I'm not, it, that I'm actually building in the office. But uh, it's just something to keep me occupied when I'm inside. Uh, you know, when I get a kit that's missing major components like canopies or something, I tend to actually have a little more fun with them because you just don't take them seriously. You just say, yeah, do what you can, and then, you know, put it on its back or whatever, you know, and cry, you know, or pirate. Oh, speaking of which, um, the Stuka, the Lindbergh Stuka, uh, what I had plans for it, I had to remove the windshield from the uh, canopy, and I used the, the miter box and, and the razor saw, and it actually did a real good job. I had to be very careful because we all know how touchy it is trying to cut a you know, clear acrylic. But I got off one piece, it looks good. So uh, that's coming together. And that's really what I got done today working on models. So I am a little disappointed in that Airfix kit, but I, I don't know if there's something I did wrong or if there's something uh, wrong with the kit or you know, maybe who knows. So I would like to hear from anybody that's got one. Also folks, uh, I've had some folks ask for my mailing address. Uh, I normally don't put that out here on the YouTube and everything, so email me at maxismodels at yahoo.com and I'll send you our mailing address. Um, that's really where we're at with all that. I am going to do a little more work before uh, I finish up tonight's video. I'd like to show some of the, some of the paint work, but it's gassing out right now. And, uh, uh, I think that was all the highlights I wanted to touch on for the moment. Well, guys, I hope you're having a great day. It just really feels so good to have all the big heavy stuff behind me and be in the Tarbis just building all day. It's, it's, it's been a relaxing day. And uh, so take care of yourselves. And as always, model on.
Hmm, hey, commie. Dog, comrade. Could the wolf, 